Welcome to Tracing Your Family Roots. My name is Arlene Sachs, and this is Edward David Luff. Welcome, Edward. I'm delighted to have you here today. Edward's been a guest on, on the show before, but today he's going to talk about uh, some United States things which are very, very unusual. Um, you started out looking for an ancestor, and let, uh, we can hold up the picture of, of the two ancestors. That's the your great, great grandfather, three? Yes twice great-great-grandfather and grandmother, that were in New York City, and you knew they were in New York City. You found them in the census in 1856. No, not in the census, in the uh, city directory. In the city directory in 1856, and again in 1863. But you couldn't yes. find them in the census. That, That's that, correct. Uh, in New York, I couldn't find in them New in York. New York. New York City. Well, if they're there a few years before and a few years after, you expect them to be there, if not in the same apartment, then certainly there somewhere. The more so because every single one of my other ancestors was. So you think uh, the family moved. <laughs> they, they, you think the family stayed together. Yeah. Um, so, what was your first thought? Or they could be there, so I'll go and it. look for them. And, and I couldn't find them. So you used Ancestry. I used, used the it. Ancestry Library edition because I went to the Library of Congress to do this. Okay, let me say a word about that. Sure. I know you went to the Library of Congress because you live in the district. Uh, in Fairfax County, and I think some, the other counties around here, the local libraries have that same edition, but you have to go there to use them. And the important thing is not all of the computers in the library have them because somebody said, well, I went there and they didn't have it. You have to ask a librarian because they have to pay it's a quite expensive to pay to, to get that information. So they usually have it on only one or two or three computers. So you have to ask the librarian to get at that special computer. Or you can go downtown, of course, and then you can use yeah. them at, at any of them. The and, yes, at the Library of Congress, it's any computer. Yeah. So anyway, so you, Also at the National Archives. Yeah. So um, there's the Ancestry. There's also something called ProQuest that, that the libraries have. Uh, and they've done a marvelous job of digitizing many of the, uh, or indexing, I should say, the, the names and then digitizing the censuses. Mm -hmm. It saved us a lot of time than sitting scrolling through and, those. And beautiful copies, too. Yes. Very high quality copies. For the most part. I prefer to print them at the National Archives because it doesn't have the legend underneath. Oh. So it, it's a nice clean copy. In fact, this is the one that was actually printed at the uh, National Archives. Okay, and, and you can, uh, that, that's the 18. Uh, this is the 1860. And that's where you actually found them. Yeah. Um, so w using Ancestry, where did you find them? Well, what I did was I put in just the last name. Okay. In this case, Gruntal. Mm -hmm. Grunf uh, Grunthal, maybe in yeah. English. And uh, up pops Ezra Grunthal. And his name was and Israel. His real name was Israel. Okay. And I wondered about that, and I almost didn't look. And I said, oh, let me take a look. And Banco, it was the right person. We've well, got to remember, the census taker only hears what he thinks he hears. And Ezra and Israel, if somebody, especially if somebody has an accent, um, sounds fairly sad. Well, this is, this is uh, Pearsall. He's a uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And he makes other similar errors, I noted, in the okay. census. Uh, and... Uh, it has to be the right person. If you think about it, uh, the, the wife's name is correct, the children's names are correct, the ages are correct, and the profession makes sense. Okay, well, that, that, that's right obviously the, the same thing. So his profession, what was his profession? Uh, he was a fancy goods dealer. And you want to explain what fancy goods is? He sold collar buttons, needles, thread, uh, trimmings for the ladies. Uh, to all the whenever they had those big hoop skirts and so on. They needed a lot of decoration and things yeah. like that. So yeah. it's all of that extra stuff and that's where they get the name fancy from. That's right. Um, so um, now you found them in a place called Glen? Glen uh, well, Co when I pulled the census up, that particular one, he was in Queens County in the town of Glen Cove. Now that today is in Nassau because the three easternmost towns in New York split off from Queens County when the city of Greater New York was formed in 1898. And so on January 1st, 1899, the newest county, Nassau County, was formed. Okay. Uh, I should say a word about what a town is. Yes. In uh, most other places, a town in New York would be called a township. Townships are the next 
smaller division than a county. Okay. Okay. But it's Do bigger not than confuse a it. Do not confuse it with a village <laughs> or a city. It's neither. The word town just has a totally different meaning in New York from what it has in other places. It is a specific legal term, not a mere term of art. Okay. Town so is usually used to mean city or, or village or something like that, not in New York. So it's, it's okay, it's, it's, a, it's a local area. Well, right, but a the, legally defined local area, uh, which constitutes a, uh, uh, a portion of a county. Okay. And you would have uh, incorporated and unincorporated villages inside the town. And you would pay taxes to the town. Okay. So, okay, so suddenly they're in this other place. Um, it's not all that far, mind you. But, but, but where is that? <laughs> okay, so you wanted to find, and you, that's a, a, a Let, very, very large a, area. Yeah, let, let's talk about the town of Glen Cove. Yeah. The town of Glen Cove is the easternmost town in Nassau County today. It would have been the easternmost town in Queens at the time, 1860. And it's very long. It stretches the entire uh, width of uh, Long Island from the north coast to the south coast of the island, and it's about five to six miles wide. That's a huge area. Mm -hmm. Where is he? You know, and I had no idea. So what do I do? First thing was I wanted to check the definition of the election district because in the 1860 census, instead of enumeration districts, they had election districts as being the definition of oh. where you did your inquiries if you were the census taker. When I looked at that at the National Archives, it's on microfilm, but unfortunately the enumeration, the election district and the town were identical. Okay, so it didn't they help. Had a, yeah, that it didn't, didn't help. help. It was exactly the same area. So enumeration districts were included, were they developed didn't exist later. Yet. They, developed. They, they only came into existence In, as a result of the second enumeration of 1870-71. Okay, that's a little bit off the track, but let's talk about that as long yeah. as you've mentioned it. Uh, there was something you've mentioned called curb stoning. I never heard that term before. Okay. And, it's um, a fascinating event. So explain what this curb stoning is. In 1870, some smart guys decided that instead of doing the work to get paid 10 cents a name, and by the way, 10 cents a name is a lot of money. You could eat at Delmonico's restaurant <laughs> in New York City for lunch for 10 cents in 1870. So that's a lot of money. Uh, and what they did was they stood on the curb stone and they counted the number of windows in the tenement and then would make up names. What am I supposed to do with Christian Rosenthal, you know, <laughs> things like that. But they made yeah. up those names, but they got caught. Okay. Well, and I, I don't know, but I presume they went to prison for it because that, that's a criminal offense. Yeah. Uh, they had violated their oaths as assistant marshals and census takers. So they, they should have gone to jail if they didn't. I don't know. But uh, it was found that this problem had occurred in five uh, towns, five cities. five cities. And so those five had to be re-enumerated, and that's why we have two enumerations for certain places, only large cities. Five okay. large cities in the United States, one of which is New York City. I'm sorry, I don't know which what? of the other four out of my head. But, uh, you know, I can imagine them standing there counting the number <laughs> of windows and making up the, the, the names for the alleged uh, yeah. residents. In any event, that's 10 years away, so we don't have no, no. this. So you only have this large area and you know they're there. Right, so they're and, and, and I don't have, in the left-hand margin, I don't have a street address, nor do I have a house number in the sense of the actual number that's written on the house, even okay. though there were such numbers on the houses okay, at that time. Okay, and that's time. what they had included after 1860. The second sorry, enumeration of 18. Uh, 70, 70, 71, and of course it becomes standard practice in, from 1880 onward to this day. Of course we have our address, and yeah. even local local area things now have the, have their address on them. Don't look at the TV. Okay, so then, so what did you do then? You went to the archives? Yes, I went to the archives and I said, well, what can I do? I was already at the archives, I had looked up the yeah. Numeration, now, the, uh, the, the, excuse okay. me, the election district. Okay, now you've, you found that and let, okay, 
um, and I found him with his family. There he is. Where is he? What to do? Yeah. My first idea after the election district issue was, well, um, let me check to see about uh, taxes. But I already knew that he had paid taxes in New York City in 1863. Those are on microfilm. Yeah. And I found him there paying for his watch and so on. These were the taxes Just, that were imposed to pay for the Civil War. Okay. So that didn't help me. Okay. Because he was obviously back in New York by 63. That's right. Uh, I had him in 1856, I have him in 1863, and now suddenly I have him in 1860 finally, after all Something. my years of searching, but I don't know where he is in the town of Glen Cove. So the next thing is, well, let me check the draft registration, because that's 1862, maybe he's still there. Unfortunately, that volume that he would have been in is missing. Oh. <laughs> so there's nothing I can do there. All right. I'm but you do have a sample of what the, what uh, the um, yes, uh, I do. We can show what one looks like. I believe that can be shown. Yes. Yeah, that's there, the, there we are. That is what a class one, those are the most eligible people. Uh, that's what they will look like in, in the, and it's in alphabetical order within a ward. Okay. So you have to know the ward to look for, once you know that ward, and there are methods of finding it. Is that, um, does Ancestry.com do any with that? Not that I know of. I think you have to go to the National Archives gotcha. because these are not online anywhere. These are original records. Those are, okay, they're not indexed or anything. Um, no, well, they're self-indexed in that they're, they're put together alphabetically. But yeah, uh, if you don't know what ward it is, you're pretty well sunk. Well, but you should be able to get that from a city directory. Yeah. Uh, you know, figure out the ward based upon the address. The address. Okay, it takes a little bit of calculating, but you could try. Do it using Morse's uh, online system. Okay, and, and, and the other thing that you found in the Internal Revenue That's list. Stephen Morse's online. Oh, okay, Stephen yeah. Morse's on, online. Right. Um, we're mentioning some sites, and we're going to mention some more. I do, do want to say that they can all be found on tracingroots.nova.org. We will list them all, and anybody wants to... Uh, uh, link to them. We'll con put in the links. The other thing I want to say, as long as I've mentioned our TV, our, uh, uh, our webpage, is that many of the shows will now be online on the web pages. So from now on, if you've missed a show, you'll be able to catch it. Uh, and those people that are not in this immediate area will be able to see it uh, just uh, clicking on their computer. Okay, so now the next thing you decided to do was to look at neighbors. Right. And if I can't search him, the best thing that I can do is go back to the 1860 uh, census and search his neighbors. So the name above, you assume that the person went down the street and went from one house to the next. Right. So it'll be the name above and the name below. What I did was I printed out the page before I found him in the census and the page after the page on which I found him in the census and started to search those neighbors. Uh, here you see the actual family, and I started searching some of the others. I found a doctor and a lawyer. So I looked to see if they had paid taxes because they paid $10 a year to practice their profession as a result of the Civil War taxes. Well, you know, that's a very high rate if you figure you can buy a meal for 10 cents. Sure. Uh, that's, you know, that's a thousand times right. more. Architects also would have paid this tax. That's very Other high. professionals. Unfortunately, I couldn't find either one of them. <laughs> they didn't pay taxes. <laughs> furthermore, when I did, well, they may not have been there anymore. Okay. Uh, furthermore, when I did uh, find uh, the actual records, which are on microfilm at the National Archives, and presumably yeah. uh, one could consult your site to, to get the yeah. citation, um, it only gives the town, but at least it gives that. Mm -hmm. So. I, was, I went to someone at the National Archives and I said, well, what can I do? And they said, it's too difficult, mm -hmm. give up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, but I wasn't going to do that. So I, I went over to the Library of Congress and um, said, what maps do you have? And they said, well, we have land ownership maps. And I, my initial reaction was, well, what use is that to me? My ancestor was a renter, not an owner. How that did you know they were good. a renter rather than an owner? 
um, from the fact of their history and the fact that I had looked to see uh, the records in New York, land okay, ownership records, and they, they, there were no such records. Furthermore, by family tradition, okay, they didn't own land. Yeah. Okay. Uh, people who lived in New York City generally rented. Uh, rented. They didn't. Yeah, but I mean, own. I, I sort of figured when he moved out there, he might. But have again, he's trying. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he doesn't know if he's going to be successful yeah. or not. In fact, he isn't. So he moves yeah. back. So he's not going to be an owner. So what did you find with these landowner rec uh, Well, again, maps comparing the 1860 census mm -hmm. to the land ownership map, this particular one that I used was the topographic map of the counties of Kings and Queens, New York, and it was compiled in 1859. That's just one year before okay. the census of 1860. Well, let's hold up this, hold up this map and you can show Right. Um, the, the, this, this, in in fact, I found him in, in well, Hicksville. The other yeah, that's okay. You found him in Hicksville. Right. Well, he, the, 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 which shown. is yeah, uh, which is a town. But then this map is different. Although it shows these these uh, three, uh, Hicksville is what what's on the on the screen as a town. But all of these other things are not other little towns nearby, but rather they're the owners yeah, that's right. of the land. Which, right. I, which. And what, what happened was I uh, looked for uh, a person whose name was misspelled in the census, but it turns out to be Burbich because, again, remember, Pearsall doesn't hear things right. Yes. <laughs> and he wrote Babbage. Oh. So I had a terrible time to find him, but eventually I did in the 1880 census. I was very lucky because 80, 80 years yeah. old and still yeah. farming. But I, what clinched it was that in both cases, the wife's name is written as Temperance. Okay. Well, a rather mean, unusual name. And so the, you had the name above it. And, the, and below Hoffman it. below it. And that was what was in that circle that we right. had on the screen. And, and, and so you know. My ancestor is enumerated, and they're supposed to be enumerated, you see, in order of rotation, order of visitation. So therefore, uh, he's uh, going to be between Burbich and Hoffman. Okay. Now, you still have no idea why they went there, or do you have some, you, you have some I guesses? I can speculate, but I don't really know why he went there. He, I think, thought that he was going to sell to all of those uh, wives and, and so on of all of those farmers, and that he would have very little or no competition. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes perfect sense. Especially because... Uh, Hicksville is at the railway junction between the main line and the Syosset line. By the way, I should just mention that I was actually born not so far from there and uh, never knew anything about this until yeah. a few, until June, last, this last June, um, and I'm only sorry that uh, my mother yeah. never lived to find out. She would have been thrilled to, to know yeah, that, that we had ancestors there. Um, I, I was born not far away. Yeah. So, it, but you said it's still relatively rural, rural there now. Uh, suburban, oh, suburban, sort of rural. Yeah. Well, that's different from the inner New York City, certainly. That oh, I, very, very. I mean, it was the right decision, I think, not to join New York City at the time. So the character uh, is totally different. Okay. Um, so anyway, but obviously you have no idea. There's no oral history or anything. Nobody ever. No, knows it exactly. failed. I don't know whether it was for religious reasons, in that there were very few other Jews. There was a Levy. Mm -hmm. There, but there were very few other Jews. But maybe it was just purely financial. He just couldn't make a go of it. Um, he had to go back, I think, to New York City to get his goods. And although he could go on the Long Island Railroad, and that would save a lot of time instead of going by water or by uh, cart, yeah, uh, it would still entail staying overnight because there's no tunnel. He's got to take the ferry across. Uh, to the, the, to, to the mainland from Long Island City. And then he has to go, in his particular case, to the west side of the city where his relatives are. So, so it's a long t And he long has two time. children and a wife. You yeah. know, if he's going to take them along, surely he has to stay overnight. And they might have been lonesome for the rest of their family. Do you, you, don't, you, you don't know. know. I, we, it, it's it, could be, it could have been economic, it could have been cultural, or it could have been a combination of the two. We could only speculate yeah. as to the reason. But anyway, I think it's interesting because you've used some doc kinds of documentation that, that we never thought of, both the, the, the military 
uh, registration, which that I've heard of, but using the maps, the uh, land ownership and, maps, and I never the, heard and of. The, and the tax, <laughs> and the, the tax, tax records, uh, which are on microfilm. You don't even have to. You can't use the originals. You can only use the microfilm. But those are, those are very very unusual record uh, sources. By, by the way, in big cities like New York City, you get the exact address. Yeah. In in a more rural place like Hicksville, you'll only get the name of the village. Well, I guess they figured there are only a few hundred. Everybody knew everybody else yeah, or something. A, a, act, actually, uh, Hicksville, for each year, uh, only covers two or three pages, and it's mostly uh, monthly payers of large tax rates because they're big, relatively large manufacturing organizations. There aren't that many individuals who are rich enough that they have to pay taxes. Maybe that's why the notions didn't work. There weren't enough people to buy us stuff even though it was a junction. Who knows? I don't know. Now, you, you wanted to mention some, another book, one of the, uh, the 19th, the checklist of the 19th century United States County maps. Uh, did you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. There is um, a, a book which was created by the Library of Congress and is generally available in most large reference libraries, which lists all of these land ownership maps for the whole country. Oh, okay. So at least as it was at that t time in the 19th century. And so you're not just at sea trying to figure out, well, is there a map for that place or not? Uh, consult this book, which I assume is going to be listed in Yeah, in we'll, the, we'll, we'll uh, list all of these in the... Uh, now, that, do you find that in the, in the map division then? Uh, uh, yes, I believe that there should be a copy there, and there may be other copies. Ge geography in the, and map division, yeah. Uh, actually, no, this... this uh, a uh, particular copy that I've listed here is mm -hmm. in the main reading room reference collection. Okay, that but means it's also know. another copy in the local history and genealogy reference collection, and there is one in the uh, geography and map reading room uh, reference collection. So that's three. In addition, uh, they are available on uh, about four by five inch um, transparency that you can make a copy of the actual map. So that, that really, that, that would be a book if you did go down to the Library of Congress that you wouldn't have to wait a half an hour for, for them no, to deliver. No, you just take it off the because shelf in any of three places. Off. But the point is that you could actually get the map yeah. uh, in color or you can get the transparency in black and white and print either Printed. one. You, you uh, may not put the uh, actual map on the photocopier you'd have to bring your own digital camera or something oh, like okay. that, or you'll have to pay approximately $50 or more to actually have a transparency made, at which, at which point it becomes free to the rest of the public <laughs> because they put that transparency online. Oh, okay, once, once. But uh, I've, I've gone in and, and uh, with a digital camera and I find, uh, in the archives yeah. anyway, it's, it's uh, and, and in fact, one thing I found about the archives after I had taken a whole bunch holding the camera, that they actually have this device that you can just put your camera in and then you can take a whole bunch of pictures very easily because you don't have to touch the camera again. You just use your automatic. I don't know if that's available, say, in the uh, geography and map division. Oh, uh, I don't know. It may or may not be. But, I don't know. you know, that's only good if you picking a lot of right. uh, sequential pictures because okay. one you can you know take a picture and it's uh, I found that that comes out very uh, very well for my for my sources at least um, now you also have this book um, that's put out by the, the yes uh, okay uh, the library of no the the national archives yeah uh, this is uh, I don't we didn't um, right it's called uh, twenty censuses and it is uh, copies of the blank records, but explains what very you, clearly you can read what each column is, and there are other explanations. There are the there's a copy of the explanation to the um, to the census taker as to mm, how oh. to take down the information. And I don't know if we can uh, show that one. Uh, there's one interesting cartoon here. I don't know if that. Well, I don't think the cartoon will show. Can, but maybe you'd like to read the caption. <laughs> Good morning, madam. I'm the census taker. Old lady, the what? The census, he says. Oh, land sakes, with, with the tramps and everything. The, anyway, it says, 
impudent fellows roaming around here taking your census, pretty soon there will be nothing left to take, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, th I thought that was very cute. There, there are a number of uh, cute little things, but it, it's a very, very useful uh, uh, book here, for example, is the 1860 census. And that it very I'm clearly at. lists. One of the things you said that the census were all very clear and had good images. Um, of course, that depends on what the original census looked like. And I've looked at some of them where the ink has like peeled off. And no matter how good a camera you have there, if that it, the original right. isn't there anymore, they get pretty bad. And I have some that are very, very good, yeah. some that are very hard to read. Uh, and you can see how little there is there. By the way, you asked me about renter versus oh, that's uh, right. um, uh, owner. And if my ancestor had been an owner, there would have been something in column eight indicating the value About, of his real estate, and there was nothing. Okay, and then, not, then the nine is just value personal. Value personal, and there was something in there, uh, I believe, uh, which is not on this copy, unfortunately. Oh, we just oh yes, want... it is. Yes, it is. Uh, well, he doesn't okay. have anything in either one. Okay. But he's obviously got to be a renter or an owner, and if he's not an owner, he's going to be a renter. Anyway, there was nothing in the value of the real estate, so that is very strong evidence that yeah. he's not an owner. Yeah, some, sometimes when you do see the, uh, well, well, the mm -hmm. slides of these things, it's very hard to read some of these very, very tiny printed headings, especially if they're side, some of them are sideways and they're, they're, they're mm -hmm. really... Uh, By the way, one other small thing I'd like to point out. This is the last census in which they separately enumerated free inhabitants uh, okay. from slave because by 1870, everybody, should, everybody, everybody is. Should be. Okay, but this is the last, it sort of stuck out. That, that, yes, uh, um, but they did take in censuses of the slaves too. They counted them yes, someplace. they did. And in fact, uh, I believe they uh, dealt with the first names, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much. I think we've t taken a look at some of the unusual sources in the United States and I, I'm, uh, thank you very much for coming. We're out of time. Okay. <laughs>